Okay, Vipers videos. Uh, not out in the barn today, but instead I am in my uh, overly crowded laundry room, which is my makeshift in the house work area. I was working on something from, if you remember my original Dan Wesson 715 CO2 uh, pellet revolver, I was griping about that whole barrel situation and it was just gnawing away at me all this time. I really liked the gun. Um, it performed fairly well. Accuracy, I think, suffered a little bit, but I was really frustrated because of the uh, advertised barrel length uh, versus actual barrel length. So I decided to make uh, another one. Anyway, so as I had mentioned in that other video, I believed that the um, original barrel was 2.5 to 2.55 rifled and the rest was smoothbore. And now I actually have the proof of it. And um, I'll show you some pictures of how I took the gun apart real quick here. So as you saw in those pictures, we have, this is actually the barrel system, how it works. Okay, so once you take your gun apart, as you saw in the pictures, you end up with this little frame situation, and you've got this little gizmo that sits inside of there. And the original, you'll have to forgive me trying to do this without a tripod. Um, that fits in there, but here is the real kicker. This is actually the rifled barrel which is 2.55 inches and not quite 65 millimeters after it's being advertised as 140 millimeters which is five and a half inches of rifled steel barrel as I told you here is what so this actually goes into that which means this smooth bore of what would that be three inches ends up being this, this this massive amount of travel with no rifling for that that barrel at which point it, it peeks through the end of the it peeks through the end of the shroud and this spring is what puts tension on the whole assembly so the back of this rounded radius part is what goes into the front of the cylinder and those little cutouts that holds pressure so that that little spongy action or springy action is just pushing the barrel forward as the back of that uh, radius breech goes into the radius of the cylinder probably hard to see here but you have to take my word for that so anyway i just kind of went all nuts and just really hated it i want to like this gun but i really really hate the fact of that barrel so i decided to make my own barrel so what i ended up doing was thought if i'm going to do this i'm going to do it the way i want so i found some old rifle i had some what did i have i think it was called a sportsman 900 which had a shrouded barrel which meant i had uh, you know 20 or 19 inches of this skinny 177 caliber barrel that i decided to use as the donor slash you know cannibalized type gun so i realized what i would have to do is to recreate if I if I didn't want to butcher up all this stuff, recreate you know this t this uh, diameter here in the back and that diameter in the front and then whatever length I wanted it to be. So what I ended up was I actually overcut it, figuring I'd have more cleanup, and I just used a hacksaw and the whole um, brass screw and some sandpapering and so on to 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 do the uh, to muzzle to do the muzzle crown. And in the back, of course, it has to be just the right diameter to slide inside of there and have the same setup. So that's what I had to do. You can't tell because I don't have really clean lathe steps. But in fact, uh, if you were to measure, these diameters are correct. And this diameter, believe it or not, is correct to that. So it just that's what you have to do. And how I did it was I used my drill press and files and sandpaper and just very carefully it took me literally 
many many hours over about four or five days mostly because I'm so my shoulder and rehab I'm so sore I can't do that kind of work for very long and I have to be careful that I don't screw up my shoulder so I, it just took a while and you have to be really patient because if you take off too much or you go the wrong way you mess it up but anyway so the drill press is kind of being Bubba Hacker used as a vertical lathe so to speak and then you do finishing up with uh, sandpaper and so on in my state-of-the-art uh, <laughs> in my uh, state-of-the-art <laughs> sanding facility thing here <laughs> that's what I that's what I use when you say boy I bet you got real nice stuff yeah <laughs> real nice <laughs> I do a lot of work by hand so now if you take a look this is how it actually will set up in this shroud and what we've got is if you see I've actually made it a quarter inch longer so this will actually be 5.75 5 and three quarter I have no idea the millimeters right now but inches of rifled barrel and um, this little aluminum collar that I made is just to replicate this step so that when I slide this spring on and this spring sits behind like a little uh, that little fake rifling there you see there's kind of like a little step in there well behind that is where that spring puts the tension for this breech cone to go into the face of the cylinder but I'll end up with a quarter inch more of rifled barrel so that's the way that will sit in the gun pretty much like this and then that step just replicates that so uh, anyway make a long story short which I have a hard time doing I'm gonna end up with a nice long barrel and then I'll go out in the barn and we'll try, try some uh, 30 feet or 10 yard accuracy and see if this longer barrel has improved what I think is already a good gun so uh, we'll see you in the out in the barn here in a little bit okay so we have transitioned back to the barn and it's kind of an interesting transition because it's actually seven months later no lie um, the last part uh, of this video where you just uh, before the transition you saw I had made a new barrel for this and um, that is of course in regards to my original video which I'll post down in the description where I first reviewed this gun and I was really disappointed in the fact that it uh, came with a two and a half inch long rifled barrel instead of the advertised five and a half. So anyway, you've already seen all that, so I'll try not to uh, belabor it. But um, believe it or not, I have not shot that gun, this gun. I don't even know if has I shot any guns in the last seven months. We had the kind of the winter and spring from hell and here it is uh, June what is it June 9th and it's like one of the first nice days we've had like all spring and early summer and it's going to be like 80 degrees I think it's 78 right now so I mean my goodness it's like the perfect time I think when I originally tested this on my first review last September I think August or September um, it was 85 and there was plenty of power so I am not going to with this new barrel I'm not going to um, crony it because I really don't care the power was definitely there it met or exceeded what was advertised even with that uh, little two and a half inch barrel sure if you can pick that up I'll show a picture of it too yeah I don't think I can pick it up but I'll yeah I can't but I'll show pictures right here And so I'm sure that the power is the same or probably increased a little bit, but I wasn't concerned with the power. My problem was I didn't care for the accuracy um, of the two and a half inch barrel. So that uh, really disappointed me. So now I have a five and three quarter inch barrel. Um, of course, I did my own crown with the uh, brass screw and lapping compound, valve lapping, grinding compound. But uh, hopefully I did a good enough job that uh, this should shoot straight. So without further ado, I'm going to, I, I wish I had two cameras. Unfortunately, all I have is my, um, hopefully the video is okay because this is actually my second hand. What is this? An old Toshiba. Um, it's not my action cams. Uh, over the seven months, they sat in the, they sat in their bag right there in my room and literally the batteries died in them. So 
Uh, this is the only one that had battery power left, which means I better get going. Um, okay, so, oh, before I get started, oh, anyway, it's the same old 30 feet, 30 feet from there to here, and I don't, I didn't have any more paper plates, which would, would make it more legit, but I do have this thicker, this is pretty thick paper, so this should be close enough. I just want to see, and I, and I did not change the sights on it, obviously I haven't shot it, so I'm hoping to God at least it shoots straight. Um, it assembled right back into the shroud uh, perfectly, so it, it should be all right. But I just want to see how it groups, so it may not even hit the, the bullseye, but that's okay. So let me get the camera set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got a table here, and I am going to get ready to shoot. I don't know if you can read that, but I'm going to start out with the... Oh, these are the same three pellets that I felt didn't give me the accuracy last year when I tested this with the factory two and a half inch rifle barrel. So now I've got my five and three quarter and I'm pretty much duplicating everything except for not paper plates. And it's 78 degrees instead of 85. But I have um, the same bench rusting, the same 30 feet. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just see what happens. I'm hopeful, but uh, hopefully I hit the, the mark here. Okay, let's go. Oh. I'm also going to, I'm going to wait 10 seconds between shots, which I will, will edit out so you'll just see the things hitting, you know, hit, 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 but I'll edit out the, the time in between. Okay, here we go. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Okay, um, wow, that is really good. I'm going to guess that was my fault. I'm still struggling with um, glasses and open sights. The, um, the target sights on there um, obviously is a very wide, you know, front blade uh, going through the, uh, uh, the notch in the back sight. So it is really tough when you're looking at this dot 30 feet away. It just, it all kind of blends together. So I'm going to consider that me. But that is, boy, I'd say that's pretty good. So let me uh, set up the next one. I think what I'll try is the, um, let's do the RWS Hobby 7 grain next. Okay, a uh, funny thing happened when I was trying to uh, switch targets, when I was explaining I was switching targets, the second hand Toshiba that was the only thing I had battery power left in, uh, the battery died. So it's obviously kind of old and beat up. Fortunately, before I came out to the barn, I had actually plugged in yeah, my Sony action cam, which I'm holding in my hand now, and the battery appears to be half charged. So, as luck would have it, I was smart enough, I guess luck would have it that I'm smart enough um, to have plug that in because now it's only been about a 15 minute delay while well, I went to get it and luckily it was uh, ready to rock so let's see here so you probably notice a little bit different video action here uh, a little bit different picture now we're going to do the RWS Hobby 7 grain wad cutters and we'll see how this does Again, I'm going to edit out the time between the shots because 10 seconds or longer. Let the CO2 recuperate, and uh, there you go. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Okay, that's... um. It's a pretty decent group. It's not as much as I was hoping, but again, it is a CO2 pistol, and I think it's way better than it was. We'll look at that later. All right, let us now switch to the one I'm hoping is the best, because it does really good in my semi-automatics, and that's the RWS Diablo Basic Wad Cutter 7 Grain. All right, we'll give that a try and see what happens. Woo 
woohoo? <laughs> Did I just woohoo? Oh wow. Um, okay, I am really, really, really happy with that whole. Okay, let us bring these back. Holy crap, man. All right. Um, well, anyway, so I'll show you pictures of all of these to match right now. So even though this paper isn't stiff enough, boy, look at that. There's one there, one there, one there. Oh my gosh, that, that's um, really something. Um, this one here, quite a bit larger. But again, it's still very, very close. I think once I knocked out that center, it was kind of hard to see. The Crossman Premieres, this year I, I know is my fault. I seem to always have one in a group that uh, I kind of mess up on. But that's still a really good group there. So that, I don't know, it doesn't seem to like the hobby. I think I had trouble with the... The original barrel, too, at not liking it. Um. Um, but boy, these ones really shine. So apparently barrels are particular about what pellets they do or don't like. And this was out of a rifle, not that it matters, but maybe the twist is a little different. But um, so yeah, um, in closing, uh, you've seen the pictures, uh, you saw the original video, uh, the two and a half inch barrel I was not happy with. My five and three quarter inch is now at least matching. The six inch Crossman Vigilante, which for $60 is a hell of a gun. This uh, retails, I think I paid like 120 for it, but I think it's around 130 to 140 now. And in it, with its original barrel, I just wasn't happy. As you saw me griping and whining, I am really, really happy with this. That was actually really hard to see, especially when you started messing with the, uh, the dot and it was getting smushed out. That is not, this is not the greatest, um, looks really big on that uh, post, or excuse me, on that blade. So anyway, I am very happy now, and I will quit whining about it. It is a great gun, especially when you put in a larger, longer rifle barrel, and I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, the two different uh, reviews that I put out on it, and... I don't know if uh, you making a barrel for yourself is something you want to do. I, I kind of just hack my way through it. But if you want to do it, you'll figure it out. All right. Take care. See ya.